By the end of this video, you're going to know how to add an event to a Facebook business page, including how to make a recurring event, if you have a link for tickets, how to add a co-host, everything you need to know step by step. My name is Jerry Potter. Yes, it rhymes with the boy wizard. Let me share my screen and we'll jump in right now. Now, whether you're doing this on a computer or your phone, I'll show you how to get started. And then after that, it's pretty much the same for either of them. So on a computer, the first thing you have to do is make sure that you are operating as your page. So I'm here on my personal profile. I come up here to my little photo up on the upper right, and then I need to choose my business page. So you'll see your business page here in the drop down. And then once you've switched, you should see your business page profile photo in the upper right corner there. Next, we're gonna click on this menu in the upper right that has the nine dots on it. Under create, we're gonna choose event. If you're on a smartphone, this is an iPhone, but Android should look similar. You're gonna go to the Facebook app, click your profile photo on the lower right corner there. Then at the top, make sure you've chosen your business page. So you see where mine says five minute social media. If it's not your business page, tap on the little arrow on the right side of that bar and choose your business page. Then down below, you're going to find the tab that says events. Now, depending on how often you use events, it might be higher, it might be lower. It just kind of depends on, you know, everybody's apps a little different. So I'm gonna tap events there. Mine is on the lower right there. And then this brings up all the events that I've created, events I'm thinking about going to. So this is just sort of your generic event screen, but we're gonna click that plus sign at the very top, and that opens up the event creation screen on mobile. I'm gonna share my computer screen for the rest of this just because it's bigger and easier for you to see, but you should be able to follow along on your phone if you need to. So right at the top, the first thing you're gonna see is the cover photo. And for business pages, by default, it takes your cover photo from your business page. That's probably not the picture that you're gonna want for your event. So I highly recommend you change it to something else. And all you have to do is click edit and then upload cover photo. And I'm just gonna grab a picture from my camera roll, but a photo of people is always good for an event. A photo of something that's related to the event is always great. Generally, you don't want it to be, oh, that was not the one I was picturing, but why not? We'll just leave that one there. Generally, what you don't wanna do is put a giant flyer for the event up here. If you have a ton of text on it, it tends to be more distracting than it is enticing. But with your own business, feel free to experiment and use whatever makes the most sense. Once it's up there, if I need to change it by dragging up and down to get it in the position that I want for what I want to show, then I can do that just with my mouse. And the actual photo, if you wanna make a photo or an image in a graphics program like Canva, then it's 1920 wide by 1080 tall in pixels. Next up is the event name. You've got 100 characters for your event name, but I think the important thing to remember here is that long names are going to get cut off. So let's say that your name is the 24th Annual Royal Anniversary Picnic Extravaganza, okay? So if that's your name, just know that this last part may get cut off. And so when people see a preview of this, it may be that all they see is the 24th Annual Royal right? So that's no good. So if this was going to be your event, then I might do this instead. I would say it's the picnic extravaganza and then maybe put the 24th annual royal anniversary. That's kind of gibberish at that point, but let's say the uh, 24th annual royal. So you might want to do it that way because again, only the first few words are going to show in some views, especially on mobile devices, okay? Next, you choose the start date for your event followed by the start time. It's optional to add an end date and time. Uh, people tend to overpack their schedules these days. So I usually encourage people to um, have an end time as well. Next question is, is it in person or virtual? And this changes a few options later. So let me walk through these for you. Is it in person or virtual? So if it's an in-person event, you would choose in person. And one of the options you get for an in-person event down here is the ability to add tickets and then you can have a link to an external website wherever the tickets happen to be for sale or even if they're free tickets, but they have to register for them. Now, just a quick best practice. If you are doing an event where people have to buy or even register for tickets somewhere else, put that information as many places as you can because sometimes people just click going to the Facebook event and they assume that means that they're going and you're gonna somehow get them a ticket, which generally is not the case. So just make sure to specify that in the description and anywhere else that you can to go to that link and secure your tickets. I do mostly virtual events, so I'm gonna choose virtual. You'll notice that ticket option's not down there anymore, which is why I wanted to show it to you uh, that way. All right, so once you choose virtual, you have three options. You can choose Facebook Live, which basically means your event will be a Facebook Live. And if you wanna learn about how to do 
a Facebook Live as an event. I've got a whole tutorial about that that I've linked up on the screen right now, as well as in the description of this video. External link basically means you can put a link to somewhere else. So maybe it's a Zoom call or something like that. Just gives you an option of where to put that link in. Or if you don't wanna use either of those, you can just do other. And then in your description, you can go through and put in the specific instructions for what they need to do, okay? Next is the details. Now, this is another section that's going to get cut off on some views. You can actually put quite a bit of information in here. I would err on the side of too much information, but I would make the first two lines the most important stuff. So again, in some views, they'll see the first three or four words of the title and the first two lines of the description. And so if the description says, we are so excited for our event this year, it's really going to be great. It doesn't tell them anything about it. So use the first two lines maybe to give like a quick summary of what it is. So people are like, oh, that's interesting. And then they want to click see more so they can learn more about it. If you want Facebook to recommend the event to people, and if it's on your business page, you probably do, you can choose a category. Now, you can't write in any category. I rarely do any events that fit anything that is in here. So if you don't find anything that makes sense, you can leave this blank. Or if you don't know what to put, sometimes I'll just put in uh, parties because, you know, who doesn't want to go to a party, right? Otherwise, though, you can leave it empty. It just makes it harder for Facebook to re recommend your event to people that might like it. Um, next, you can add co-hosts. And so if you have somebody else that has a business page, they have to have a business page that is co-hosting the event with you, you can start typing their business page in here. So let's say I was co-hosting an event with my friend Justin Brown from Primal Video. I might type in Primal Video. And then let's see, none of those are his business pages. So um, here's what you can do. If their name doesn't come up, what you wanna do is you wanna go to their business page. So now I'm on the Primal Video business page and I look up here in the URL and it's facebook.com slash Primal Video. So Primal Video is the username for this business page. So now over here, I'm gonna type the at symbol and then I'm gonna type Primal Video, the username. And now there it comes right up. So now down here it says pending. So a message will get sent to that business page. You should probably reach out to the person if you're co-hosting the event with them and just ask them to look for it. And then they accept. And that way the event will show up for their people and your people. If the event is happening more than once, you can click on this repeat event section and choose a frequency. So is it a daily event? Is it a weekly event? Or if neither of those fit, you can choose custom. And it's going to bring up a whole other calendar page for you to do things in here with that. And then communication settings. This is a new feature as, as of this recording. Um, do you want to show the guest list? I always recommend you show the guest list because if somebody else sees someone they know that's already going, that strongly increases the chances that they'll want to go too. And then you decide, can only host post in the event? Or... If anybody can post in the event, you leave that off. Another thing I encourage you to do is let anybody post in the event because all that does is help the event come up more often in notifications for people that have said they're interested or maybe going, okay? And then uh, post must be approved by a host. If you're nervous about what other people put in the event, you can turn that on. That means anybody can post in your event, but if they do, you'll get to see what they're posting and approve it beforehand. Now, again, check all your settings before you hit this next part. But once you're ready, hit create event. It'll take a couple of seconds and your event will be there. Now, let's talk about quickly how to promote your event because you obviously want people to come, right? As soon as you hit create event, you're going to see this screen come up and it's going to allow you to invite people or pages that have followed your business page, okay? You can't just wildly spam anybody but you can invite up to 50 of the people who follow your business page to this event. If you're looking for somebody specific, there's a search bar right here at the top, okay? And then you'll see here, it says five minute social media, Jerry Potter, that's the business page. I can click this button to change to my profile. And now I can go through and I can invite people that I am personally friends with to come to this event. So here's our event. It's been created. All of the information is here. If you come back later, you wanna invite people, you can click invite there. And again, invite more people. You should also send the event to other people that are involved in the event and ask them to invite people from their personal profile too. The more people you invite, the more engagement the event gets, the more likely Facebook is to recommend that event to other people who might like it. And one more thing that's really important, let's say you don't wanna do this event anymore or you need to change something, you can go to your business page again, click more, because I don't have events here at the top because I don't do them very often here, and I'm gonna click events. Here's the event we just created, so I'm gonna click on that. And then over here, under the three dot menu, you can cancel the event, 
and then it'll ask you, do you want to cancel it? Which means they tell you tell everybody that has been invited that it's been canceled, or you can just delete it and it just disappears entirely. For tips on how to get more people aware of your Facebook event, I've linked to a video on the screen right now or in the description of this video. And hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please take a second, give it a like or leave me a comment. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home.